Hey everyone, my name is Colin. This is my 1996 Bronco that I've had for, I don't know, a couple years now. Um, it's powered by a 351 and it is tired. It's got about 200,000 miles on it. It has this mystery knock thing. Let's see if you can hear. You can hear that. You can hear that tapping. So, uh, anyways, we're going to retire that 351. This is the last day that this motor is going to be running inside this truck. And by retiring, I mean giving it a proper send off. Let's go. Hell yeah. The motor is oddly quiet now. <laughs> so this is the motor that's going in it. This is out of a 2015 F-150. It is a 5 liter motor with the 6R80 um, transmission. And it is going to get put inside that Bronco. So we'll start here with the teardown. And I will say that getting the headlights out was probably the hardest thing of the entire project so far. I don't know why they made it that way, but that's how it is. Getting the front clip off took me a couple weeks just because I was traveling and busy with work, so it, it took a lot longer than I expected. I have my assistant holding the wrench here to get the body bolts off. Hey. All right, so I'm just about ready to get the body off this thing. There's eight bolts that hold the body. There's two up by the toe or the foot wells. There's two behind the driver's and passenger seat. There's two right here on either side of the rear tire wells. And then there's these two right here at the tailgate area. And all of them came out except for these two, which I assume is from years of, you know, neglect and grime. So I have to cut these off. And as soon as these are free, I think the body will come up. Everything's disconnected that I can think of short of the shifter cable and I'm sure there's going to be a wire or two that I forgot connected that we're going to find uh, what the braking strength of those is. So here we go. So ultimately I did end up getting these two bolts out that I cut off with a pipe wrench and a little bit of WD-40 and a lot of profanity. I did not film that for obvious reasons. So they did come out. Now, do you have to take the body off? No, but it certainly does make life a lot easier. I wanted to clean the frame up and do some other stuff and it just seemed like the right thing to do because I had the lift anyways. The difficulty using the lift is the back arms stuck out way too far so it was hard to get them to a point where I could pick up the body without hitting the frame or the leaf spring or the rear tire. Also I mentioned disconnecting the shift cable and I still forgot to do it and believe it or not it's a lot stronger than you would think. Didn't break. So eventually everything came loose and I wheeled it outside and the body did not fall off of the lift yet. So since pushing this thing outside, I have gotten both the drive shafts out. I have uh, disconnected both the fuel lines. The transmission mount is those bolts are off. Uh, the engine mount nuts are off. So really all I have left to do is cut the exhaust off and lift it out. Up till now, it has been basic hand tools, um, short of having a lift, but obviously you don't have to pull the whole body off if you don't want to. Uh, I just want to clean all this stuff up and have easier access. So I did, but uh, really the most difficult part of this so far is removing the headlights, oddly enough. Uh, that's a complete pain in the ass. Once you get past that, it's home free. So let's get all of this stuff cut and lifted out, and we'll be on to the next part. I'd like to point out it is not lost on me that I have just finished saying basic hand tools and here I am with a two post lift and a tractor. It's, I get it, but I have them and I'm going to use them. <clears throat> okay, so now the part we've all been waiting for is how do we modify the frame to fit a motor that it was never designed for? Well, as far as I understand it, we have to take these bolt holes right here for the motor mounts and kind of elongate them a little bit. Um, and then these areas in here are going to have to be removed, so I'll have to cut them out. Um, and then outside of that, the transmission cross member has to have some kind of a modification to it. I, I really don't know yet. So y'all uh, will watch me figure this out in real time, and we'll see how it happens. So I guess one more thing to note is uh, I'm going to be using the factory transfer case out of the Bronco. It's a Borg 11356 with the electronic shift solenoid there 
And I'm only doing that to retain the factory push button on the dash. No other reason. Um, you can use the transfer case out of the uh, F-150. Uh, there's a company called Mars that sells a control little module, I guess. It's got a knob on it. Uh, you mount it on the dash somewhere. I just, I don't want to have that aftermarket looking knob thing stuck somewhere on the in the front dash. So I'm going to I'm going to opt for keeping the factory look uh, with this. Probably going to keep that just in case, you know, as a backup. But uh, for now, we're going to go with this. And the way we're going to use this is with an adapter here that I picked up from a company called Advanced Adapters. And this thing here will bolt to the back of the transmission and allow us to use the 1356 in some form or fashion. Again, this is what the internet tells me. I don't actually know yet. So. We're going to learn together. <clears throat> but before I get into any of that, it is time to clean this nasty thing up. It is absolutely covered in oil, grease, grime, sand, you name it. It's got to go. Let's get it cleaned up. I decided to spare you all the footage of me power washing the frame and instead I will show you what it took to put the adapter on. It was pretty easy except I forgot one bolt on the bottom and couldn't figure out why it wouldn't come off. So once I got that out, the adapter went right on with the existing hardware and then the um, transfer case slid right onto the output shaft of the transmission like it was meant to be there. Pretty cool. Well, I dare say it's been going very well up until now. I um, haven't really had a single hiccup. The only hiccup that, uh, excuse me, only hiccup I've been running into right now is the bolts that run uh, back into the factory transfer case are too long. Um, this adapter is pretty short, and I just can't get the bolts in the hole where they're supposed to go. So I'm going to have to go to the store tomorrow and buy some bolts that are probably, I don't know, a half an inch shorter or so. Um, but the second thing that I just noticed is where the drive shaft runs out. It's probably going to be in the way of this catalytic converter right here. Um, the only reason that kind of sucks is I was hoping to just run this thing with the factory tune and not have to deal with a mail order tune and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, if I got to take the cats off, so be it. Um, I'm not terribly upset about that. So um, this is kind of the official end of day one. I'm very pleased with the progress so far. Everything's come apart very nicely. Haven't really broken any or destroyed anything, which is always a plus. Um, so, yeah, we're going to wrap it up here for today. We'll see you all next one. All right, so I've roughly marked out what we're taking out here. Um, first, we're gonna have to elongate our holes a little bit for the motor mount bolts to go through. And then this is where the alternator is gonna sit here. We're probably gonna have to do some more cutting there. And then down here, all the way across is where the AC compressor sits. And I'll just come back and weld this back together. So I had several people ask on my social media platforms that I posted these videos to what plasma cutter I'm using. And all I can tell you is it is the cheapest one that Amazon sold a few years ago. It is 120 volt and really likes 30 amps service. So when you plug it into a wall outlet, um, it doesn't go well, especially if you're cutting thicker stuff. So what I've had to do is rig it up to where it runs off of my big generator with a 30 amp plug, and then it works fantastically. So I can say that if you're in the market for a plasma cutter, do not buy anything that's 120 volt, fork out the money, buy the 220, and you will not regret it one bit. Why didn't I do that? Well, I'm a consummate cheap ass, and anytime I can get away with buying a cheaper tool, I will do that. And then when it breaks is when I go buy the more expensive tool. And so far, that system has done pretty well for me. So at this point, it is time for our first test fit. My dad is here helping me out. And it, uh, it goes in pretty well the first time, but the um, oil cooler is hitting the frame, so we have to pull it back out and cut out another section, as you'll see here in just a minute. All right, so first stab at it, we're gonna have to cut here, basically follow this line right here, and cut that out for the alternator and for the, uh, this oil cooler down here that was in the way. And then also the exhaust was too wide to fit in the frame, so we're going to take this Y pipe off. So as you'll see, it's about to be a process of everything you'd expect. Just in and out with the motor and trimming a little bit more each time just to make sure it all fits.
All right, we are taking a break for lunch, but this is where we clearanced for the uh, AC compressor here. I'm gonna come back with some steel and uh, plate this in, because that's, that's, you know, way too much. Um, I had to make a little notch there for the AC line. As far as I can tell, this is a single stage pump and it's not a variable displacement, so I should be able to use it. And then over here, where the oil filter is, we've got plenty of room under here. And this is actually gonna, um, this gap is gonna get bigger. I know it's close right now, it's because it is, but it's gonna get bigger and I'll show you why in a second. There's the driver's side motor mount in. Passenger side motor mount is in. Currently, the transfer case is sitting on the, uh, there's a shield down there. So this cross member bolts in. It needs to slide forward to this hole, about four and three quarter inches. We'll just have to widen these holes a little bit, but this is the factory mount out of the Bronco. Um, so it'll, and it, it bolts right into this Atlas um, adapter here, and it'll drop right back into the factory um, cross member here as well. So we're just gonna slide, like I said, slide this forward, and then maybe wall those holes out a little bit. But uh, we'll be using at least a few of the factory frames, some holes in the frame, we'll probably have to drill some more. But overall, very easy, way too easy. All right, so I've moved the transmission cross member forward. It is currently bolted to the mount. Um, this bolt here was here. So there used to be two bolts in this cross member uh, right here. I've slid it forward. That hole doesn't line up quite, so I'll have to use the uh, plasma cutter to kind of expand that hole a little bit, but it's really close. But this is bolted in. I drilled a new hole uh, right there for the bottom bolt. So the issue now is the frame rails get narrower as you go forward. So that we've slid four inches forward, we have three quarters of an inch gap right here. So what I'm gonna do is take the plasma cutter and cut right across here, take three quarters of an inch out, weld it back together, and then drill three new bolt holes right here to mount where we've slid forward and we'll be done. So at this point, I'm just wire wheeling the frame. Uh, I had a sinus infection and really didn't feel like doing much else. But here in a second, um, I'm gonna start making some templates. As you'll see here, there's um, that spot where I overcut on the uh, AC compressor. I'm welding some metal back in there. I'm adding a brace just behind there. As you can see uh, what I'm welding in now, it's um, it kind of goes on the other side of where the axle beam mounts and it just kind of keeps that from flexing since I cut out so much metal there. And then finally, the last piece that I'm cutting is another gusset on the driver's side to kind of reinforce what I cut out as well. Um, can't have enough reinforcement. Obviously, I'm not a structural engineer and can't say what is or isn't gonna help, but more is more in this case, I guess. So at this point, I've got everything welded in that needs to be in and everything out that needs to be cut out. The frame has mostly been coated in POR15. I will finish the rest of that at a later date. Um, but the motor is now ready to go in and sit in the frame permanently, hopefully, and not have to come back out, which I'll find out here in a little while that it absolutely is coming right back out. Anyways, the uh, motor is back in the frame, as I said, so I'm going to push it inside and set the body back on the frame for the first time to see how it fits. Uh, unfortunately, it has other ideas for me, and you'll see here in just a second that the body actually falls off the lift because the dunnage rolled, and yep, there it goes right there. And so uh, it's it's on there now, uh, at least on the passenger side. So I'm going to keep finagling it and trying to get it down on both sides, as you'll see here in just a second. So this gets us to where I am currently, and the motor more or less fits. It's very tight. Uh, the air box here, there's room to get my fingers around everywhere. Uh, same on the back of the intake manifold. There's enough room to slide my hand around pretty much anywhere. Um, there's two issues though that I'm going to have to fix and let me show you what they are. 
I'm on the driver's side here, and the uh, heat shield is right up against the firewall. There is literally no clearance. Um, and same for the bottom of the manifold here. There's just absolutely no clearance. So what I'm proposing to do is to take everything back apart and flip the motor mounts over. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so these motor mounts are two pieces. Um, there's that back part there. Focus. Oh, guys. And then there's the front part that kind of clamshells around that back bracket right there. And so the motor mount bolt is not centered on the mount. It's on the forward part now. So I'm thinking if I can take it all apart and, sl and flip that part around so that the bolt will be further back, it'll slide the whole motor forward about an inch and a half, and that'll fix all the problems. So here's the passenger side. Uh, I'm trying to get the light right. Hold on. So same story on the passenger side. You can see that the bolt is forward on the mount. I can take those two bolts apart and then the two on the bottom, flip it over, and then again, should slide everything forward. But you can kind of see here that there's just also not much clearance on the passenger side. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this video down. It's getting long, 15 minutes or so. Um, I will start a second video, basically picking up where I left off, uh, taking everything back apart trying to flip the motor mounts and get the motor forward a little bit more. And I will have that hopefully completed here pretty soon. One thing I am waiting on is the harness. I have sent the harness and the ECM and the fuse box off to get stripped down uh, to a guy in Tennessee um, to run all, everything standalone. So hopefully he's done with that pretty soon and I can start plugging everything back in. I would really like to hear this thing run at least briefly before I start buttoning everything back up. So uh, in case there's any issues, I can deal with them while I have access to everything.